This is the story, fantastically true story, of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. To leave the United States with a legal passport is relatively simple. Enemy agents, however, find difficulty in obtaining legal passports. In a moment, you'll see a communist plot to send a secret agent out of the country. fair bowler. Well, maybe you will get a lot more free time. After all, you got this Saturday afternoon off. Or have you? To look at? A healthy, hearty, happy salesman. To know? Comrade Neal, special courier of the Communist Party. At this rate, you've become a pretty fair bowler, all right, in about 50 years. Special assignment, comrade. Two things count. Secrecy and speed. It's essential, comrade, that a certain member of the party, an important member, leave the country as soon as possible. Where he's going, of course, is none of our concern. But that he gets there is, huh? Yeah. He is an American citizen, and ordinarily getting a passport would be just routine. But? But he's a lot more than just an American citizen. He's a walking file of top-secret American information, codes, chat all up here, memorized. So the United States isn't about to give him a passport. So we have a slight job ahead of us, huh? Stowaway? No, that's crude and uncomfortable. What's more important, it hardly ever works. Uh, comrade, we're speaking of are already assumed new identity. A different name, a different enough appearance. Most of the details have already been attended to. Now it's just a matter of a few specific items. This transportation ticket has to be picked up. My job. His passport, your job. Where do I get a passport? Your contact is a passport forger. Oh, turn right on 3rd Street, comrade. You know, there are very few good passport forgers left in this area. They don't come out in the light. Where do I figure in? Go into the dark after them. Turn here and park just around the corner. leading up to the library? Yeah. You'll be here at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Park here. Walk over to the library and stand on the third step. Look around as if you're waiting for somebody to pick you up. You'll be contacted. The passport forger? Yeah. But when he talks to you, don't turn to him. He is not to be seen. That's part of the bargain we made with him. Here's the rest of it. 500 bucks. He'll tell you how to give it to him. When he gives you the passport, put it in your pocket without looking at it. Wait to be picked up. Oh, carry a briefcase as if you were waiting for someone. Is that all clear? Yeah. Good. Do you mind dropping me off in the corner of Broadway? No, not a bit. Oh, one more thing. The comrade who is to leave the country, he must get out. Understand? 
Yeah, I understand. Okay, let's go. Please tell me the way to Cochrane Park. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you go straight ahead about a mile, and it's a three-way light. Then turn left two blocks. A three-way light and left two blocks. Thanks. Good old Dressler. I wonder how much the FBI already knows about the memory man. Operation Export Herb, getting a top comrade out of the country? Yeah, as of a few minutes ago. I was supposed to pick up the phony passport at 5 this afternoon. Comrade Neil, my recent passenger, is supposed to arrange for the tickets. Where do you pick up the passport? In front of the public library on 3rd Street. Good. We've been hoping we'd run into you on this sooner or later, Herb. We've been on this one for months. You've been following Comrade Neil? And four or five others. Comrade George is running the show, Herb. We don't want this memory man to get out of the country if we can help it. But we haven't any way of stopping him unless we know now what name he goes by and what he looks like. We have every one of these forges covered in one way or another. When and if we put the finger on one of them, they'll move in and pick him up. Want me to try to get a look at the passport when I get it? No, that'll be too risky. They'll be watching you. We'll have to get a line on him some other way. Can you set up cameras? No, I don't think that'll work. He'll wait for you to move in on him, then he'll move fast with his hat over his face. Ah, oh, they're cagey. Herb, can you have your briefcase with you? I have to. They ordered me to. Good. Go to your office from here, Herb. Leave your briefcase in your car unlocked. We'll get a hold of it and rig it up with a portable wire recorder and put it back in your car. Wire recorder? Sure, he's bound to say something to you. If we can get it on record, we'll have something to work on. You want to try it? It can be awkward if you get caught. How do I start the wire recorder? We'll send it to start itself, automatically, at five. And Herb, sorry to spoil you Saturday afternoon. Don't mention it. I don't get to the park very often anymore. Fresh air is good for me.
One, two, three, four, five. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Testing. One, two, three, four, five. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Silverick said Neil is supposed to pick up transportation tickets. Well, he could have gotten them. I didn't catch up with him for an hour after I left you. Uh, finally picked him up at his rooming house, and then I followed him to a restaurant. Anything? I think so. He met another comrade there. All right, keep talking and come along, will you? Well, I didn't catch too much of the conversation, but I did latch on to this. What he said was... decide to take a look inside. been changed. Small apartment house, 603 Vincent Street, room 113. Still 5 o'clock. Step on it. Open, come in. That's far enough, pal. You got the dough? Uh, yeah, sure. Put it on the table near the screen here. Uh, what? Put it on the table near the screen here. Get back a few feet, then turn around. You've got the passport, haven't you? Of course I've got the passport. Get back. Okay, take it. Well, big things come in little packages, huh? So long, pal. So long. Comrade George, there's been a security leak, comrade. We're checking everyone, thoroughly, inside and out. Take that. Let's go. that caused us to change our place of rendezvous with the passport forger. Nor was it a matter of premeditated security on our part. No, it was something far different and far more demanding and far more concrete. 
I'll be specific, Comrade Herb. An hour before your scheduled rendezvous in front of the library, we checked the area thoroughly. It was covered, Comrade. Watched. By what we must assume to be FBI men. Comrade, where did you go after you left me? For a walk. Where? In the park. Alone? Alone. You sure? Positive. Did you talk with anyone? No. Oh, yes. Who? A man with a newspaper. I made some remark about it's being a nice day. Is that all you talked to him about? That's all. Does that check? Comrade Hull says you sat for about five minutes on a bench looking at something that you took out of this briefcase. That's right. What were you looking at, comrade? I don't exactly remember. Think, comrade. Oh, yes. It was some copy on a public health program that I'd been working on at the office. I see. Comrade. Yes? Isn't that being rather absurd? Checking up on you is absurd? Well, checking up in that way. Just because you see what papers I have in my briefcase doesn't mean you know what papers I was looking at on that park bench. Comrade Herb, are you trying to acquit or incriminate yourself? Or trying for some reason to keep us out of your briefcase? Now we are being absurd. Comrade George, why am I being subjected to this? I've, I've followed out orders. I've always followed orders ever since I've been in the party. Comrade, please. No one is above suspicion in the party. You know that. Neil has been through this tonight. Hull has, too. I'll go through it later. Another step up the ladder. I'm satisfied with your account of your time. But just to make sure... health program, comrade. This is what really counts, comrade. A good job all around. Goodbye, comrade. Goodbye. Comrade George, I'm glad you satisfied yourself about me. Your duty comes way ahead of my feelings. Knowing that, my feelings can't be hurt. Thank you, comrade. Goodbye. Goodbye. I wonder what happened. Why wasn't the wire recorder in the briefcase? And more important, what can the FBI do now about Operation Export? The outbound party member has already got his passport and his transportation tickets. You'd better, as they say, Philbrick, get in touch. to say I'll be a little late for the game tonight. Is my hand still open? Sure thing, Herb. The chips are stacked all the way around and we're itching to go. By the way, Herb, your new client called. He has motion pictures of the plant and he wants you to see them. Can you drop by on your way over? Right. Make it fast, will you? Yeah, I'll do my best. So long. Okay, Ross, you better get underway. And I'll get in touch with you at the immigration department as soon as I get the word from Philbrick. If I get it. Right. I'll be waiting. your luck, Philbrick.
take me to Mark's chop house? Still two blocks from Mark's chop house to the place I'm gonna meet Dresser. But it's best to play it cozy. Come in. Well, you were late in calling. Did you run into trouble? Well, just lost a few years of my life, that's all. They opened it. The last minute change, Herb. Ross, one of our agents, tailed Neil late this afternoon. The comrades decided to change your rendezvous spot. We didn't know where it was. So since we couldn't be sure of keeping you covered, we decided not to let you take the risk. Thanks. Did you get the passport for them? Yeah. I picked it up at a small apartment house at 630 Vincent. Couldn't get a look at the forger, though. Uh, did you hear him, his voice? Did he talk much? Well, sure, I, I tried to draw him out. I thought I had the recorder with me. <sighs> Thank goodness. We may still have a chance. We're pretty sure that the communists are using one of four known passport forgers. We've been onto them for months. On this reel, we have pictured each of the forgers in sound. Oh, I figured on picking out the right one by voice, which you were going to record for us. Yeah, but that's out now, huh? Well, not exactly. You heard the voice, Herb. Maybe you can pick out the right one for us. You mean now I'm the memory man? <laughs> yeah. I'd like for you to face away from the screen, Herb, and pay very little attention. Pay no attention to what they're saying, to the actual words. It's liable to throw you. And if I can identify one of these voices? Well, we're working closely with the immigration officials. We have every one of these forges covered in one way or another. When and if we put the finger on one of them, they'll move in and pick him up and whatever paraphernalia he has around, a negative, a bad first copy of the passport or whatever. Let's go. These pictures, of course, were taken when and where we could get them. The sound will be rough. I guess you're right. You only get what you pay for. Still, that's an awful lot for rent. Too much. I'm not sure. I'll play it again. No, no, never mind. I, that can't be him. Number two. But look, pal, going to that joint for a weekend ain't my idea, Rats. Sure. That's what I said. Play it smart, pal. That's it. That's the only way it pays off. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's it. That's the one. You sure? I'm positive. Voice is a dead giveaway, and that pal business is the clincher. Now all we need is a break. Hello? Dressler. The Philbrick identified the voice all right. It's Harry Mart, 3812 North Raymond. That's a restaurant front. Okay, we'll be right over. Come on, Herb, you might as well go the distance this time. We won't be out in the open. In here, Dressler. It paid off? Yep. Uh, you know who he is, this this memory man? Well, immigration thinks so. We'll be sure in a few minutes. Hey, this is quite a going business, huh? <laughs> now, there are, there are six prints of this one, only one of this in the wastebasket, and uh, two of these. Stephen J. Anderson. Does this name check with any of the passenger lists? Yeah, airlines, midnight flight. Tickets for Stephen J. Anderson were picked up at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh-huh. Just after Comrade Neal left me. Yeah. It's 11.15 now. Has this Harry, this, this passport forger, been picked up? He's out on the town with that $500 you passed him. He won't be hard to find. Hello? Here's our answer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Goodbye. They got him. Immigration? They're holding him on illegal passport. Well, are they sure it's the party man we want? It could be some other phony passport client of this Harry's. Well, they'll be positive after they fingerprint him when he's booked. They're pretty sure now. Immigration says when they first addressed him, they called him Comrade. His head spun around so fast it nearly came off. <laughs> well, I guess that's it, Herb. Thanks for your help. Don't mention it.
As soon as the fingerprint comparisons were made, the FBI had conclusive proof of Anderson's identity. And facing an illegal passport charge, he was removed as a threat to the nation's security. Next week, another story from the files of a man who spent nine fantastic years as a counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Thank you.